What's up everyone? Welcome to the 90th episode of Cartoon Fight Club. I'm your host, Animation Rewind, and if you're new to this series, then be sure to check out the older content. But if you know how the game is played, then let's get ready for the fight. Tonight's episode was animated by the legendary Sun God, so if you enjoy what you see, head on over to his channel and subscribe. Speaking of tonight's battle, we have a sea fight between Spongebob Squarepants and Aquaman. With all this being said, let's introduce Cartoon Fight Club's 90th round of fighters. Spongebob is back on Cartoon Fight Club for a third time. The first two times he was on here, he fought Mickey Mouse. Today, he faces someone very similar to Mermaid Man. That's right, Aquaman. And because we already discussed most of his basic abilities the first two times he was on here, for this episode, we're going to discuss the skills Spongebob learned from Mermaid Man and the things he can do with the magical page. Spongebob's favorite television heroes are without question Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. He looks up to them as some of his greatest role models. Spongebob really does all he can to be just like the Mermaid Man he sees on TV. But when he gets a chance to meet Mermaid Man in real life, he realizes that what he saw on TV isn't exactly what happens in the real world. Don't get me wrong, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy do in fact have crazy superpowers, except today, they are very old and retired. But sadly for them, evil never retires. Evil! That's where Spongebob comes in. He does his best to help Mermaid Man fight crime, but for the most part, he lacks the expertise to do so on such a skill that Mermaid could do in his prime. However, thanks to Spongebob's inconsistent Toon Force, it can easily be argued that Spongebob himself is actually more powerful than Mermaid Man. Because what Spongebob lacks in crime fighting experience, he makes up with his Toon Force and powerful imagination. His imagination contains the last page in the magical book of the universe. With this page, Spongebob has access to wishing for nearly anything. Now the page does have limits. Bubbles the Dolphin stated that it only has the power to destroy the universe, so Spongebob wouldn't be able to wish for anything beyond that. But even with the universal boundary, the limits on this page are seemingly endless. Spongebob has used this page many times to warp reality, give him new abilities on the fly, and rewrite story plots. Overall, Spongebob is a sea sponge who aspires to be as great as Mermaid Man once was, but not to his knowing, he may already be greater. From one undersea hero to another, let's discuss Aquaman. Like many of the heroes in the DC multiverse, there are plenty of Aquamen. Some are full Atlantean, some are half human, half Atlantean, some are born with powers, some gain their powers, and some go through a little bit of both. For this episode, we are going to focus on the New 52 Aquaman. New 52 Aquaman is half human, half Atlantean. His father, Thomas, is just a normal lighthouse keeper, and his mother, Atlanta, is the former queen of Atlantis. I say former because like most superheroes, Aquaman's mother is dead. Because Aquaman's brother, Ocean Master, killed her so he could be king. And it was Ocean Master's evil ways that indirectly forced Arthur Curry to adapt into the water hero we all know today. Long story short, Aquaman defeated Ocean Master and is now the true rightful king of Atlantis. Aquaman is quite a powerful hero. He can swim up to speeds of 150 miles per hour and can lift 150 times his body weight, which puts his max lifting strength at nearly 50,000 pounds. He also possesses superhuman durability, being able to swim at the bottom of the ocean. Some of the strongest submarines can't even survive water pressure that deep, so for Aquaman to be able to casually last down there is some crazy amounts of strength. Aquaman's signature ability is known as Marine Telepathy, this is where Aquaman can control and force sea creatures to do whatever he wants. He can control the mind of any sea creature and he can use their abilities at his own will. Now before anyone complains, this is not outside help. Because Aquaman forces the creatures to obey his command, 
and thus it is Aquaman pulling the strings behind the sea animals. The only contradicting thing to Aquaman's marine telepathy is the fact that he's one of the strongest sea beings on Earth. So the reason why Aquaman forces weaker animals to do work for him beats me. Heck, Aquaman in general is kinda redundant if you think about it, but now I'm just getting off track. With the trident of Neptune, Aquaman can control all the tides and create massive tsunamis and bend water at his will. He can also unleash blasts of lightning. This thing is also really sharp and makes for a great close combat weapon. Now Aquaman is pretty powerful but he does have his limits. He can easily become water deprived if he's out of the ocean's reach for too long. This would drain his powers and if he's out long enough, he would go into a coma. Plus if Aquaman is beaten hard enough, he has died before from physical wounds alone. Overall, Aquaman is one of the strongest marine characters in the DC Universe. He has the ability to control any marine creature at his will, but if he's out of water for too long, he can enter a severe coma. And now, let's get ready for the fight. This battle's going to take place in Bikini Bottom with no prep time. Let the battle begin! I not amused. I call upon the sea. This will stop you. Later. Victory Screech! Well, it looks like SpongeBob is still undefeated. Now, before we discuss why he wins, I want to give a special thanks to the Sun God himself, the Sun God. So, if you enjoyed what you saw, head on over to his channel and subscribe. Now, let's discuss SpongeBob versus Aquaman. Now, SpongeBob winning might come as a surprise since he's a sea creature, and Aquaman's signature ability is to command sea creatures to his will. But Spongebob has plenty of ways around Aquaman's marine telepathy. For starters, Spongebob can survive and fully function without a brain. He wants to let Patrick borrow his brain for a whole week. So once Spongebob removes his brain, there would be nothing for Aquaman to telepathically communicate to since Spongebob's brain would be disconnected to his body. Secondly, Spongebob has the Toon Force to not only be aware of mind control, but also fight against it. Plankton has tried to control Spongebob's brain many times, but always fails to do so. He once rebuilt a Spongebob robotically, and even the robot Spongebob that was designed to listen to Plankton wouldn't listen to Plankton. Basically, Spongebob's brain does not work like a normal brain. It's actually so useless that he doesn't even need it to think or survive. Heck, to an extent, Spongebob can't even control his own mind, so for a third party like Aquaman to do it, it would actually be kind of a stretch. And then there's the magical page. 
which kind of makes this whole thing a bit unfair, because with the page, Spongebob could pre-write himself a plot with him as the victor. Now this does not mean that Spongebob can win every battle he faces with this page. The page does have its clear limits. But even without the page, Spongebob has the Toon Force to do crazy high tier things like go full Goofy Goober and use the power of rock and roll to his advantage. Basically, when it comes down to it, Spongebob has way too many ways to defeat Aquaman, while Aquaman would solely have to rely on his own physical limits in an attempt to get a hold of Spongebob's mind. The winner is Spongebob. Now, if you want to see a two-on-two -two rematch between Spongebob and Patrick versus Aquaman and Aqualad, you know what to do. Comment down below the word rematch, and if this episode gets 4,000 rematch comments, there will be a rematch. Also, don't forget to comment down your ideas for future episodes of Cartoon Fight Club. They may even become a future episode. And stay tuned, because the next fighters are going to be revealed on the next episode of Cartoon Fight Club. can no longer hide behind the skirts of Athena. Athena is dead because of the rage that consumes you, Kratos. What more will you destroy? <laughs> Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it.